Shalom, more praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, El Shai, Ba'ashem, Ha'raka, Kudash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders, a great millstone who rule well. And Shalom to the whole for elect. This is Payal of the GMS London camp. And in the title of this video, we determined upon upload. But basically, I wanted to go into basically um, going half of this truth, man. All right, where, where, where the end? All right, the the beginning of the evils setting in upon the, the beginning of evils, the beginning of troubles, and this is the end. All right, the time that has been anticipated for a very long time, and I always like to mention um, Enoch or Chavanach, which basically means um, man of wisdom. That man of wisdom, as she prophesied. Of the Lord coming with his thousands of angels, as it tells you in the book of Jude, which is a very powerful scripture because this man, this man of wisdom, um, Enoch, basically spoke about the second death before the first death even took place. But um, more or less, a few generations after him, all right, quite speedily, mind you, the first death took place upon the earth, all right. So, but bringing it back to Enoch, from then it's been prophesied, all right, that the end was going to come, all right, and the Lord would come back to render judgment upon the, the, the wicked upon the earth. And this is thousand years, thousands upon thousands of years, generations upon generations in the making. And we're, we're right at the door of all the said things, these prophecies that have been spoken of in this book. And his end won't take place until, you know, all these prophecies are fulfilled. The word of the Heavenly Father is fulfilled. But in saying that, it it, it really um, brings home the, 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 the heaviness or, you know, the weight of all the things that we're doing and what we're laboring from. And that we have to go that much harder. So I've got a couple of scriptures written down. I'm just going to touch on them, Lord willing, through the Spirit. And um, Lord willing, you be edified. So let's get into this, the book of Ecclesiastes 9 and 10. I'm going to read it through and break it down as I go along uh, the second time around. So it says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whether thou goest. So let's run it back. So it says, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do. So whatsoever your hand findeth to do. So there's, there's a word or a, a saying, an idiom. I think the best way to put it is a saying or even a word to describe someone that's talented or has ability the word is dab hand okay someone has a dab hand for something you could say Floyd May Mayweather is, has got is, has a dab is, is a da is, it's got a boxing dab hand basically and um, I'll probably put law willing I remember I'm going to post the definition of dab hand in there but it really goes into from what I understand of it as it stands right now is having a great ability to do something all right so the heavenly father has given us his life but also has bestowed a gift different gifts upon all the people on the face of the earth that's why when you go into the book of sirach it tells you about the different roles that part that make up a society but then the man of wisdom will, will not basically be into any of that because he'll be chasing after wisdom so Let's read it again. It says, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do. So wherever you, your talent is within, all right, it says, do it with thy might, all right? So you got to do it with your might. So the Lord basically has blessed you with a talent. Now you have that talent. What you got to do with that talent? You got to work it, all right? You have to bring about interest on it, you know? Say, for example, you had a product that is your, your form of talent. That product, you now have to take it and um, break it up into whatever said decimals or however you, you're going to um, move it to the masses of the people, all right, to present that talent. 
And then you have to, in, pre- in presentation of it, you have to get back that usury. And this is this is what we do with the faith that we've been disposed, dis- disposed, salakia, tongue twister, that we have been given according to our measure. All right? That's what we do. So it says, for there is no work, nor device, no knowledge, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave. Yeah, once you're dead, you're dead, all right? That ability, that skill that you have within this life while you have the breath in you, you you can't do nothing with it no more. It's it's finished. And I always I always say this that for example, you have um a good example is artists, all right. So there ain't gonna be no more Tupac albums because Tupac ain't alive unless he's recorded, you know, his albums. That's all you're getting. It's done. It's it's <laughs> it's all it's that's as much product as possible, and no one can recreate that, all right? Biggie, you can't get no more Biggie albums. Whitney Houston, you can't get no more Whitney Houston albums. Prince, you can't get no more Prince albums. Michael Jackson, you can't get no albums from him. All these great Frank Sinatra, all these different singers, you can't get no more material out of them. Why? Because they passed. That was a, a, a talent that was bestowed upon that those individuals, and no one can duplicate it because it was according to their measure. And that's the same with us. We all, being bricks, being parts um, of the body of Yahweh Shai, all right? No one can take your place. That's your unique ability. Lord willing, we be of the elect, all right? And we endure it through enduring unto end and showing diligence in this work. You've basically you fulfilled your role within the body of Yahweh Shai, and that's your set role, your designated role. No one can take that from you. All right. So it's starting with the apostles on down. So it says, "Whether thou goest." So I read that again. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave. Whether thou goest. So let's get an example of, of someone that utilized that talent to, to the to his zenith. All right. And he was an example for us. He was actually mentioned by. Paul, I mean Peter Salakia, as being a great man of many works, all right? And he, no one met his level of work, all right? In utilizing his talent. No other than the man himself, Paul. So this is Second Timothy 4 and 6. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand, all right? So this is the time for him to translate onto the other side from the third to the fourth dimension, all right? To be clothed with his, his spiritual body, his celestial body. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. That's right. He said he fought a good fight, all right? He basically, you know, did what he had to do. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And that's the main thing. How do you finish your course? How can you finish your course? At least you finish with the faith at the end of it. That's the main thing. It's like running a relay race with a baton. Right? If you don't finish, if you drop the baton, you can't just go and finish the race. You have to run back and pick it up. But Paul was saying he never dropped it. He kept that baton representing the faith. He held tight onto it and ran his race and he met the finish line with it in hand. All right? Verse 8, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto them also that love his appearing. All right? So this is this is the reward for all those men that follow in, Peter's, in Paul's stead. That of what? Keeping the faith unto the end, you know, enduring, you know, as he mentions in Acts 14 and 22, that the saints must enter the kingdom through great tribulation, right? That we have to endure all hardness as good soldiers of Yahweh Shai. But in doing so, we basically won't let go of that crown that we've been given at this point in time, right? Us enduring until the end, basically we're going to enter into the, the, um, the kingdom or, you know, however, it, whether we die on this side, or we get beamed up and we don't see death on this side. 
basically the heavenly father is going to do what? He's going to he's going to beam us up, all right? And the Yahweh Shai is going to bestow upon us that crown, all right? So I want to finish in this scripture with all that being said. And these precepts, well, uh, Ecclesiastes 9 and 10 and, and this one, I always remember them because Apostle Taha mentioned these in, in the Passover sit-down many years ago, man. And um, they're powerful scriptures, man. And they they always, that's the, the reason why I'm saying it's because I, that's what I always think of them in that way that, hey, we got we to keep going, man, no matter what's presented before us whatever obstacle you have to keep going man you have to show your faith all right so it's Baruch 4 and 28 for as it was your mind to go astray from the most high so be in return seek him 10 times more so let's read this again for as it was your mind to go astray from the most high yeah it was, it was our mind why because the heavenly father set up he preordained it from the beginning all right that there'll be a falling away all right Deuteronomy 28 tells you about the curses where we would worship wood and stone. All right. And then Jeremiah goes into about discontinuing from our faith. And Hosea breaks it down that basically because we're hard headed, that the Lord said he ain't gonna we'll be known as a no people and we won't deal he won't deal with us no more. Alright. But that was because it was set up within us in the flesh to go off, just like as in the time of Noah. The Lord, the Heavenly Father said it himself that they that man also is of flesh and that my way will not always prosper, prosper in him. All right, Lucy paraphrasing. So, so being returned, all right, because what does it say in the book of Hosea? It says, um, that will be as the sand of the sea, and that I'm mixing, I'm, I'm meshing two scriptures, escape me right now. But basically, there's a, the Lord, the Heavenly Father said he would stir up our pure minds, all right? And that we would return unto the search of our father, fathers, all right? But the value of the dry bones, the waking up, you know, and, and the awakening, wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter, and also one of the main scriptures, Revelations 11, where it talks about after three and a half days, the spirit of life entered into them. And they, they made to stand up on their feet and fear fell upon them that saw them. All right. So being returned, that's what it is, Revelations 11. So being returned, um, seeing him, seek him 10 times more. So now, before we, when we knew who, you know, who we were and all the things of the nation, now that we've been put into our members, we're meant to go that much harder. All right. In the book of Ecclesiastes, I told you. About whatever you put your hand to do, do it with all that might, all right? But in this case, it's actually, it's, it's telling you now in Baruch that we got to go 10 times as hard, all right? So you got to utilize that, this talent that you've been, dis, uh, been presented. I don't know what word I'm trying to say, disposed, or uh, it's escaped me. But it's a luckier. Um, we're meant to go that harder, all right? And this is what we gotta do. We, these these works that we do are ultimately gonna be a defense unto us, man. So, with that, man, I say shalom and Lord willing, he was edified. To the next one, shalom, shalom, shalom.